I am a teacher and architectural historian. I'm specialized in Islamic Persian or Iranian architecture. My job is to travel to remote places, look at historic and sometimes ancient structures and to come up with an interpretation of what they embody for a broader audience. I look at the development of certain buildings, their visual and physical properties, their construction materials, their built environment, and their social and cultural context. I talk to people and collect what is known as oral history. I form relationships with locals to get a better understanding of those cultures. I go inside people's homes to hear their stories. But I also spend a lot of time visiting archives and museums in Asia, Europe, and Africa, where I study historical manuscripts. These manuscripts rigorously documented detailed information about people, places, cultures, traditions, landscape, and boundaries, and were written by travelers from all different nationalities, including Cornelius Le Bruyne, who was a 17th century artist and documented uh, uh, the 17th century Persia or modern day Iran. And J. Albert Mand Leslo, who was sent to Persia as an ambassador at the time, and carefully documented detailed information about people, uh, culture, traditions, um, language, foods, and architecture. And Monsieur Nicolas Sanson, born in 1600 in France, who was a French cartographer or map maker. We even have several 19th century American travelers, such as Reverend Justin Perkins, who uh, carefully documented his observations of all things Persian in his book called Eight Years in Persia. So as you just see, the traveling that I do is something that's been done for hundreds of years. During the age of exploration, which lasted from the 15th to 17th century, Europeans were traveling to unknown destinations to discover other cultures and to collect and bring back local knowledge about their urban development, farming methods, and foods. This resulted in importation of potato and tobacco from Americas and silk, cobalt, paper, spices, and herbs from nations alongside the Silk Road. But they also exchanged architectural ideas and innovations. Persian gardens were seen in Rome. Ottoman windows became a feature of Venetian villas. Brightly colored stained glass windows in French cathedrals became fashionable in luxurious dwellings of Armenian traders in Iran. Turkish and Persian tiles and what became known as Islamic art found its way to Africa and from there to Spain and Portugal to become known as Moorish architecture. But none of this would have been possible without the travelers keeping an open mind to people languages and cultures that they were exposed to. And that is something that I also try to do as a modern day traveler. My job requires me to be respectful of other people, no matter who they are, where they are, and what they do. To be emotionally and culturally sensitive so that I can increase my acceptance of people who are different from me. Now, why do I do this? Why did those travelers all those years ago suffer through their journeys to discover these unknown lands? Well, they were partially working in spreading the European capitalism. But I do this because I know based on our past history, we can learn a great deal from each other. From the history of great civilizations that have completely disappeared, such as the Indus Valley civilization, Greenland's Vikings, and the Maya. Throughout the course of the history, many civilizations have vanished as a result of widespread disease, droughts, wars, and economic hardship. But they were also civilizations that survived. When you travel to places with thousands of years of history, with architectural and often climatic solutions that are the product of millennia, we can learn about their survival techniques in a shifting climate. Architectural innovations such as zero pollution, natural cooling and ventilation systems known as wind catchers and shaded streets. Residential courtyards that feature water ponds and vegetation. 
and water channels that brought water all the way from the mountains to your house in desert all seem very simple at first glance, but they resulted from hundreds of years of trial and error-based experiments that created practical solutions to the harsh regional climate. Now, you might be wondering, what is this shifting climate? Shifting climate refers to a sudden change in patterns of climate. This can be extreme heat, extreme cold, extreme rainfall, which can result in exhaustion and death, hypothermia and death, flooding and disease, respectively. These changes make our life more difficult, uncomfortable, and expensive. Now, we can disbelieve the science, but we can't ignore history. In terms of shifting climate, most recently, there was the medieval warm period, which lasted from the 10th to the 13th century. This was manifested as increasing temperatures in the North Atlantic region in China and cooler temperatures in the tropical Pacific. This period was followed by another period known as the Little Ice Age, which lasted from the 16th to the 19th century. This was manifested as cooler or warmer temperatures in parts of Asia and Europe. In Europe, this was documented in paintings showing the usually snow-covered European Alps melting away and River Thames in London completely frozen. And more recent manifestations of our changing climate can be seen all over our planet in Asia, in Europe, in the Middle East, and in the United States. Here I give you a great yet tragic example of a recent event in the city of Shiraz, once famous for its grapes and wine, that shows how changing the traditional layout can result in catastrophe. They turned a gully specifically designed to drain flood water out of town into a highway, and here is the result. This illustrates the need to appeal to historical knowledge embodied in many previous cultures who have the knowledge in battle the climate change. History shows us that we have a lot more in common with each other than you might think. History shows us that regardless of our beliefs, religion, and nationality, we all share the same struggles. We are all trying to survive in a changing world. I look for remains of this knowledge in ancient countries to better understand how architecture adapts to climate. I believe that it is my duty as a modern day citizen to learn about the struggles that people went through in order to survive. I also believe it is my duty to keep an open mind to the great possibility of yet another disaster striking our nations. And I believe it is my duty to teach the next generation of bright and educated students how to study, learn, and prepare for what's to come. Thank you.